This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and hey, it's a OnePlus. This is the OnePlus X. There's the OnePlus One we reviewed. There's also the OnePlus Two, which is the higher-end offering from, well, the folks at OnePlus. And this is the affordable OnePlus X, which has got to be the prettiest inexpensive phone I have ever seen. It's $250 glass, front and back. This one's a little bit special. For those of you who are watching from the United States, you're used to seeing it in what's called Onyx, which is basically a black glass with silver sides. And there's the very rare and even more expensive ceramic finish. Well, this one is actually from Gearbest. They're an importer exporter from China who actually can get you stuff sometimes that's pretty hard to find otherwise and funny thing about oneplus is their their phones are readily available in china you don't need an invite system there billions of people can go to town with oneplus phones so obviously there you have also the white model available champagne and gearbus sells it for around 275 dollars the price goes up price goes down a little bit but anyway so we're looking at that model and this gets into also the fact there's a couple of different models with different lte bands we have one for china one for india one for the united states europe We'll talk about all that. Anyway, neat phone. It's the least expensive OnePlus yet. It doesn't try to be high-end, though. This is the Snapdragon 801 CPU from 2014, 2015. Once upon a time, it was a flagship -y CPU. In fact, it was in the original OnePlus One. 3 gigs of RAM, that's pretty nice. 16 gigs, gigs of storage in here, and a lot more to talk about. So we're going to look at it now. You know, I just don't think I can say it enough. This is one of the prettier phones on the market, and that's really particularly impressive given the fact that it's also one of the least expensive. This is $250 unlocked for GSM networks. So no carrier, no monthly payments, no nothing, 250 bucks, boom, put it in your pocket, it's your phone. That's pretty good. So primarily that means T-Mobile, AT&T, all their smaller carriers. Uh, it means not Sprint, not Virgin, not Verizon. They use CDMA, but there's a host of GSM carriers in the United States. It's a 5-inch phone, so you have a 5-inch display here, and it's AMOLED, 1920 by 1080. A very pretty display. It's on the cool side, which means whites look kind of blue. Now, the interesting thing is, because this one is actually an import model from Hong Kong, where they're much more readily available in China. We'll talk about that in a minute, because that really peeves me. Anyway, available in white there unlike the United States, where you get it onyx black, or the very rare limited edition sort of ceramic finish. Anyway, the Chinese model often ships with, instead of Oxygen OS, which is what the United States and the EU models run, and that's really Android 5.1.1 Lollipop with customizations that were done by OnePlus, now that they're not working with Cyanogen anymore, you get instead Hydrogen OS. So I've reflashed this back over to running Oxygen, but Hydrogen, interestingly, actually has color temperature settings in the, the settings grouping here, and that isn't in Oxygen. So sure, it's theoretically possible. Interesting that. Anyway, it's not that cool. It's fine. Back to how pretty it is. It's just Darn pretty. They call this color champagne. Now, this is heavily iPhone 5 derivative. It's kind of, I would say, embarrassing, but in an inexpensive phone, you know, we don't expect as much. Then again, OnePlus came up with some pretty original and unique designs. Surprised they didn't try here. Right down to the lock slider, which is something you don't usually see on Android phones right here, so we can mute it with that lock slider. The straight sides, although they have little lines or grooves running here, parallel to the side. So slight difference. We got the same speaker hole kind of grills here. Down firing mono speaker. Antenna lines, so on. Of course it has USB 2.0 port. Doesn't use the USB-C port like the One Plus 2. Obviously it's not going to use a lightning cable either. And on this side we have our volume controls, the power button, and that is your multi-SIM card slot. Because this is a dual SIM phone, this one carrier that you pop out requires a little uh, coordination to put everything in there, but it can hold two SIMs or one SIM and a micro SD card. So yeah, dual SIM configurations aren't that popular in the United States, but in some overseas countries they are more popular if you want to have two numbers on one phone without having to carry two phones. Probably in the United States most of us would say, woohoo, I get to have two phones and you'd rather have two. More antenna lines there. There's your headphone jack. We have two microphones on it. That's one of the microphone holes right there. And the back is glass as well. And it's pretty and it's chamfered. And these nice little edges here will start to show scratches on the metal, unfortunately. Uh, it's a nice enough looking phone, obviously, and we have chamfering here, too. Really, for, for a phone this cheap, it's astoundingly nice. 
Uh, the drawback is, well, we have Gorilla Glass 3 here on the front. It's glass front and back. And just like with the iPhones of this design era and the Samsung Galaxy S6, only somehow even more so, just a really slippery phone. In fact, it's so slippery in the box, and OnePlus does a good job with packaging, they actually give you a little silicone case. So speaking of the box, since OnePlus does a nice job of packaging, despite the affordable price of this phone, here we have the nice little holder for the phone. And then if you open it up, voila, there is the silicone cover that I speak of. You know, this is not anything fancy. It's a nice little slightly frosted looking thing that goes with the finish of the phone just fine. You slip it on. Very easy to do. And there it is. So, helps a bit with the slipperies. Good times for that. Also, inside you get your little instruction manual. You get the pretty USB cable they use. Again, this is USB 2.0, it's not USB-C, and you get the charger. So that's what you get in the box. Okay, now that we've talked about some of the fine points of the phone and given it some praise, here is the, oh well, not quite as exciting because Folks, it's 250 bucks. Not everything is going to be awesome on this. This is not going to be something that kicks the butt off the Galaxy S6 or something like that, is it? First off, here is the OnePlus One, the first OnePlus. Bigger display, 5.5 inches, same resolution. A different industrial design, one that is unique. Certainly not iPhone derivative. Well, guess what? Inside, you're pretty much looking at the OnePlus One all over again. Now, considering the OnePlus One was pretty cool a couple of years ago, right? I suppose that's not such a bad thing. Snapdragon 801 quad-core CPU clock at 2.3 gigahertz. So that was once ago a flagship CPU. And it's still, let's face it, you know, phones are awful darn fast, faster than a lot of us need. It's still a pretty capable CPU, even if it's not up there with the Snapdragon 808 or 810 or the current high-end CPUs. It has 3 gigs of RAM, so that's pretty ample by today's standards. And just 16 gigs of storage, but again, it's an affordable phone. That's okay. There is a micro SD card slot. And we have a 13 megapixel camera on the back, the usual front facing camera. And it's not the best. It's not the same sensor that they use in the OnePlus 2, which is the higher end phone that costs $70 more than the OnePlus X. It's not going to win any awards in terms of cameras. So there, there's a couple of detractors. Another thing is the way OnePlus does business, which I will freely admit that I despise. Uh, they've gotten better. They no longer have contests to, to earn yourself invites by doing things like des destroying f your old phone, which is just a waste of money, and you should be giving that away if you don't want to sell it. But still, they use the invite system. Now, in China, like I said, you can just go ahead and buy one of these. So obviously, they are not that supply constrained. There is a lot of folks in China buying a lot of phones. But uh, they're doing this mostly as a marketing tactic to make the phone seem harder to obtain, to make it seem more rare, more special. That's cheese ball, right? Okay, you do it once with your first phone, but they still continue to do that. So you still need an invite to buy the OnePlus X from OnePlus's website if you're in the U.S. or in Europe. So big blab. I just don't really dig that so much. Okay, that part's over. Now, a couple of other ways the phone is hobbled in to befit its low price tag. It has single band Wi-Fi 802.11n, 2.4 gigahertz only, no 5 gigahertz, no usual dual band goodness. And I don't know if that's because that way they don't have to pay Qualcomm as much for licensing the chipset or if they just want to make it seem lower end. Also, it has no NFC on board. It does have Bluetooth 4.0. It has a GPS with GLONASS. So those are the usual standard goodies you expect to find on a phone. In terms of LTE bands, now these days so many phones have just a oh, wealth of 4G LTE bands, particularly a lot of the unlock ones. We've, we've even seen ones that do both GSM and CDMA, which this does not. Uh, the... <laughs> They should have more LTE bands on this for an unlocked phone, honestly. So you're, you're missing a couple of bands that really would be nice to have in the United States, which would be 12 for T-Mobile. Also, you folks in Bell Canada could use 12, and there's no band 17 for AT&T. Now, those bands are newer bands to expand coverage, improve coverage, so they're not absolutely 100% necessary. It's not like the phone won't work. Likely, it will in most places that you go. But still, we have bands 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. 
not as many as I'd like to see. So that's a little bit difficult, especially if you look at something like the Moto G that actually gives you more band support. Back to the nice things, the display has 441 PPI. It is AMOLED. You will not be able to see pixels unless you're using a microscope. And Oxygen OS, uh, OnePlus likes to have their own custom special OS to set them apart. It's a lot like stock Android. Obviously, they're customizing some of the icons and stuff like that, but you have your app drawer here. No surprise, it behaves as you would expect. Again, based on Lollipop 5.1.1. Marshmallow 6.0 is out. We've seen it on a few phones now. We are not seeing it here. I guess eventually we will. Uh, they haven't been historically really very fast with some of their OS updates. We'll see. For the settings kind of thing, it's again pretty stock Android and they absolutely go to town here with settings. It is so customizable and that's in the spirit of the previous one. For example, on the buttons. You can set what happens when you do long presses. You can have on-screen navigation if you don't want to use the capacitive touch buttons here, which are not backlit, so you might actually choose to do that. You can have it use on-screen buttons instead. You can set which one is your back and which one is your multitasking button as well. For the display, we have proximity wake. If your hand is close, we got the double tap to wake. You have notifications where the display can wake up momentarily if you have a notification come in, it's, it's pretty nice the amount of customization you can do here. And if you find the UI a little bit too bare bones, I'm fine with it. I like just stock Android. You can put on the launcher of your choice. They also have this shelf, which they call a beta product. Swipe in from the right side all the way. And it says, how do you lease it? It shows you who you've called recently there, and it shows you the apps that you've mo used most recently as well. I, I leave it up to you whether you find that useful or not, and you don't have to enable that. You can turn that off if you like. So how about gaming? I've got the latest Need for Speed game playing here. It might be an older chipset, but it's still very capable, and the screen certainly is beautiful. And sorry, I'm trying to play this one-handed and talk at the same time. Whoa, driving like a drunk. Anyway, it plays very nicely. It's perfectly adequate. Speaker audio comes from down here. It's this speaker right here. These are not stereo speakers. This is a mono speaker. So performance in general, we still have that game background and I have a lot of their apps running. It's absolutely fine. And unsurprisingly, it benchmarks much like the OnePlus One that preceded it running on the same chipset. And we'll throw up a benchmark comparison graph so you can see with the benchmark numbers. So I don't have to read them at you and you don't have to try to memorize them. You can just look at them right on screen. So the camera, yeah, it's not hideous, it's 13 megapixel shooter, but it's not a real high-end sensor in here. The, the UI for the camera is a little lackluster. It does get the job done. Uh, these days there are, there are alternative camera apps you can download from Google Play Store if you don't like it. Humongous shutter button right there, switching your front and back cameras, HDR on and off, beauty shot in case you're taking people who have blemishes and wrinkles or what have you and your flash control and but wait there's actually more in it you don't see but if you swipe it from the side you got photo video panorama slow motion and time lapse to choose from as well and look another settings wheel woohoo not a whole lot there going on so you can choose 12 megapixel in 4x3 resolution or you can go a little lower resolution if you like widescreen better save location you can put on the card if you want it's pretty pretty bare bones it's also not the fastest camera you got tap to focus right there and now for something that's static it's been staring at forever it's pretty good if it's, it's something that has moved ever so slightly and not so good so let's take a look at the end product how it looks Alrighty, so we're in the Photos app right here, and we have a very pretty rose. See how it looks a little foggy or a little bit hazy? That's what I'm talking about. It's just not all that. And the greens are kind of like a little surreal there, a little too cool. Yeah. Now this is better, although it's got some whiteout going on here as we take a look at the more exposed areas. And the, the AMOLED screen makes the colors look more vivid than they do on the computer. They're not quite that kind of gone to town crazy. Taken in just about darkness in my woman cave study here, here's the cat. The flash is very bright and very effective for cat. And it actually captured a reasonable amount of detail, plenty of white out thanks to the flash there on the white sections of the fur, but 
there's a reasonable amount of detail. So, you know, it's not like the world's worst camera. It's not hideous. And it's only, again, a $250 phone. So how much can we expect? And sample video. The odd thing about this is actually the frame rate looks very jittery. And not jittery. It's a little bit like, it looks like 18 frames per second, doesn't it? The software stabilization for video is obviously not very good, and the whiteout is pretty darn extreme there. But, gosh, if you're coming from a older phone or another cheap phone, you're not going to say this camera is a disaster. It's just not going to, you know, show something that's going to show up your friends who have a Galaxy S6 or an iPhone 6S or whatever, one of the best camera phones on the market. It's passable. So that's the OnePlus X. It's available, you know how it goes, right? With OnePlus, sort of, with an invite now for 250 bucks for the glass-backed model. And obviously it's also available now from exporters from China like GearBest, the one who, su who supplied this phone to us. And I, you'll get it more quickly there, but you won't get 4G LTE in the United States. All that said, it, like I said, it, this is definitely the nicest looking, really inexpensive phone on the market. The Moto G is probably the better value leader and has more LTE bands and all that sort of thing, but this one is just darn nice looking. Um, performance is fine on it, and the camera is okay. It's not fantastic. It's a $250 phone, though. I mean, how much can we pick on it, right? Call quality on this is very good. It automatically configures for a variety of SIMs. We tried it with AT&T and T-Mobile. We didn't have to mess with any APN settings and all that sort of thing. So it's not bad. It does have competition. There's the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3 that we review, which is also a really nice and attractive phone. Arguably, maybe not as pretty looking as this, though. I'm going to get some better LTE coverage, more bands on that. But bigger phones. So these days, a lot of phones are 5.5 inches. This being 5 inches, if you're looking for something that is really the same size as the iPhone 6S, not many phones are anymore. And a little smaller than the Galaxy S6. Well, this is it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.